Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure a SFTP server on Windows Server 2022 and use it to transfer files. Starting from Windows Server 2019 and Windows 10 with the build number 1809, you have support for OpenSSH out of the box. There's no need to use any third party library to run a SSH server or SFTP server. Before I start deploying a SFTP server on Windows, let me talk about FTP versus SFTP. FTP is a file transfer protocol which is not secure protocol because it does not have the ability to secure the data while it is in transit. The data sent using FTP is transmitted in clear text which makes it easy to intercept which is a big security concern and it uses port 21. Two alternatives to FTP are, the first one is FTPS, which uses FTP over SSL or TLS, and it is still a FTP protocol with added support of TLS certificate to offer encryption, and it uses port 22. The second one is which is FTP over SSH. This method uses SSH for transferring files, which encrypts the communication by default. Although both protocols are used for transferring files securely, they are totally different by design. FTPS is not a firewall friendly and it is difficult to configure. Hence, I will focus on SFTP in this video. I'm using two VMs in my lab environment for this demo, a server called Server01 running Windows Server 2022 and it will work as an open SSH server. A Windows 10 client machine that has FileZilla FTP client installed and it will connect to the open SSH server using the SFTP protocol. Now, instead of using FileZilla FTP client, you can also use WinSCP or other FTP client that supports the SFTP protocol. All right, let me connect to server 01. Now I have already logged into server 01 as an administrator and I will install the OpenSSH feature using PowerShell. So I'm going to right click on start and click on Windows PowerShell admin. I'm going to type the command get Windows capability online where object is like open SSH star. So if I press enter, you can see I have two features. One is open SSH client, which is already installed. Another one is open SSH server. So I'm going to install open SSH server on this server. So I'm going to type add windows capability hyphen online hyphen name. Let me copy this, paste it here, press enter. All right make sure the installation is successful and it says true for online. Next, I need to start the OpenSSH service and set the startup mode to automatic. All right, so I'm gonna type get hyphen service minus name sshd set service minus startup automatic. And then I'm going to pass through to another command to start the service and say pass through again and press enter ensure that the service is running and the main configuration file of the open ssh server on windows is program data ssh and it's actually the ssh config but sometimes windows can also read the configuration from the user profile which is user profile percent dot ssh config if it is available in my case it is not available so my ssh configuration is in program data ssh folder and the file name is sshd config now if you want to specify a custom configuration you can use the minus f switch for sshd.exe so you can go into command prompt and type sshd.exe minus f and then you can specify your custom config. Let's say it is in C drive SSH folder, and then you can specify your custom config file. 
Now let me talk about the custom SSH port. By default, the open SSH server listens to TCP port 22, but you can change the port to something else. So let me type get hyphen content and then I'll go into program data, SSH, sshd underscore config. So I'm going to read the sshd config file and then within that config file, I'm going to replace port 22 with port 223 and then I'm going to set the content which is C program data SSH SSHD underscore config. I'll press enter. So this command changed the port number from 22 to 2223 and saved it in the SSHD underscore config file. After this, you need to restart the OpenSSH service by running the command restart hyphen service sshd and if you want to make sure that the service is listening on the new port number you can run the command get hyphen net tcp connection minus local port 2223 select local star date and then i'm going to add few custom expressions and press enter okay you can see that the open ssh server is listening on port 2223. Now by default the OpenSSH server will allow every local or domain users to connect. The OpenSSH server in Windows lets you control which users or groups are allowed to connect to the server or denied a connection using SFTP and SSH. Now if you want to do that you can add the following directives. Deny users to deny any users, allow users to allow any users, deny groups to deny any groups, allow groups to allow any groups. So if you want to allow or deny a particular user or group, you need to specify that in the configuration file. So let me open the configuration file, which is in percent program data percent SSH, SSHD underscore config. Open notepad. Let me maximize this. Scroll down a little. I'll add a comment. Allow or deny users and groups. So if you want to allow access to few local groups, add the directive which is allow groups and your domain name and the group name. So I'm going to add administrators and SSH underscore admins. So these are the local groups which I have. If you want to deny some groups, you can say deny groups and then the group names. Likewise, so if you would like to allow or deny access to the users, you can say allow users or deny users. So adding this line in the SSH configuration file will allow the members of the administrators and SSH admins group in the tasty biryani domain to connect and it will deny access to everyone else. Now one more thing, it is recommended to specify the account name in lower cases. Furthermore, if you are going to specify a domain account in UPN format, you must replace the at character with question mark to avoid any conflicts with regular Linux patterns. For example, to specify, let's say user at domain.com with an allow or deny directive, you must type it as user question mark domain.com. I'm going to remove this and I'll close it and I'm not going to save it. So now that everything has been deployed and configured, let me show you how you can connect to this open SSH server using SFTP. So I'm on the Windows 10 desktop. I'm going to launch the FileZilla app, which I've already installed. So I'm going to make a connection to the SFTP server. I'll click file and click on site manager, click on new site. I'll say SFTP server for the name and then for the protocol, I'm going to select SFTP and for the host name, I will type the IP address of my SFTP server, which is 192.168.10.5. And for the port number, we changed it from the default port of 22 to 2223. So I'm going to type that and I'll keep the logon type as normal 
and I'll type the username in lowercase. So I'm going to use uh, my administrator account and the password. Click on connect. I don't want to save the password. Click OK. If it doesn't work, just disable the firewall on the SFTP server and you can try again. Select SFTP server and click connect. I will type the password. So when you connect for the first time, you'll see the unknown host key warning. So I'm going to simply click on OK to trust the host and continue connecting. So by default, you will land in your user profile directory when you connect to the server, which in my case is C drive users administrator. However, you can specify a custom directory in the SSHD config file to change the default root directory for SFTP. So I am back on my SFTP server. I'm going to open up program data, SSH, and the SSHD config file. Open it with notepad. Scroll all the way down and you can see ch root directory is set to none. So you can specify something like C drive SFTP folder. All right, I'm going to save it. Open up services console. Select the service open SSH SSH server. Right click on it and click on restart. So now if you go back to your SFTP client and connect again, so I'm going to abort the previous connection. Click on OK. All right, you can see it has connected to the new directory. Now this is particularly useful on web servers where you want your users to land directly inside the website's root directory instead of their home directory. Now if you run into any issues while working on OpenSSH server, you can always view the event logs. Under application and services logs, open SSH and you can see admin logs and the operational logs. The open SSH server also supports file-based logging, but you need to add few lines to enable the file-based logging. So go into program data, SSH folder, SSHD config file, open it with notepad, scroll all the way down and type syslog facility local zero log level space debug three. Save this file and restart your SSH service. And after making the changes, you will be able to view the debug logs in the program data SSH folder. I hope you like this video. For more videos like these, please subscribe to my channel.